Good morning, folks, and welcome back to Wishwell Farms, and happy Monday. Time to do it all again. And the first thing on the agenda today is to get this trailer packed up and on the road to our satellite location. I'm currently still waiting on our wholesale delivery of southern produce that should arrive here any moment. And once my crew arrives here in about an hour, we have a busy day in the fields and in the greenhouses. We've got beautiful weather, so let's get started. Wow, that's a good peach. These are some of the smallest Indiana cantaloupes I think I've ever seen. It was obviously one of the early picks and someone was probably grading out all their small ones. But that's all I could get last week. Today's delivery is supposed to be a lot larger, probably even much bigger than these. You know, these are getting close to being a normal size cantaloupe. That's probably a 100 count or a 110 count, which is how many would fill this bin. But this one was a 120 because of all those small ones that were mixed in. Hopefully I'll start getting some 70s and 80s. 90s are okay. And sometimes I'll get 60s, but those are almost too big. Then it's hard to get enough melons on the trailer. All right, the produce trailer is ready to head out. And I'm gonna head down to the cucumber and zucchini patch, see how the guys are doing. And I was just down there looking at bell peppers. They are ready for harvest. So we're gonna be picking bell peppers today too. They are beautiful. It's one of our best crops I've seen in a long time. We need one of your tubs. What? We need one of your tubs. We're out. 
So are the zucchini and cucumbers a little bit better today than they were Friday? The zucchini are definitely a lot better, but I mean the cucumbers are somewhat better, but there's still not too many of them. Yeah. I'm about one bucket in. Okay. Well, here's one that's got missed for about a week. That's too big. They're not so good right here in this wet spot. This is where all the water pooled up during those heavy rains. And it kind of stunted the plants. And there's not many ripe cucumbers except this one that Daniel just missed. It's like 12 inches long. Holy moly. That might be a new record length right there. We're going to have to measure that one. The zucchini look a lot nicer today. This is how we like to pick them. A little bit bigger than a banana. But on Mondays, they tend to be bigger because they have not been picked since Friday. So, you know, this one should have been picked on Friday when it was like this. That's how much they grow over a two-day weekend. Since we pick every other day, we have to be careful not to miss any because they will double in size in a two-day period. We gotta get these vines moved out of the way so we don't run over them with the truck when we're going down this drive row loading up cucumbers. The melons are growing so good right now. They love this heat. There's a little baby one. It would've got run over out here in the aisle way. Another little guy. That's the way most of them are. There are some bigger ones out here, but a majority of them are baseball size right now. Definitely starting to feel the pressure of the summer season bearing down on me. <laughs> we got so much corn ready to pick. The zooks and cukes are making a comeback. The watermelons are vining out like crazy. The cantaloupes are gonna be ready to pick in probably 10 days. There's just so much to do. Mondays, I just feel overwhelmed because you know we took a day off on Sunday. And it just feels like I'm playing catch up on Monday, trying to get everything rolling again. So the guys are just about done picking cucumbers and zucchini. They'll get them all loaded up and brought up to the barn. The girls are just about finished picking tomatoes in the greenhouses, We're getting those in the barn. And before we pack those tomatoes, I'm gonna have them all come out here and help me pick bell peppers next. I'm gonna finish up moving these vines out of the watermelon row so we can drive down this row. And yeah, there's just so much happening right now on the farm. The tomatoes need strung again. There's some weeds to pull. I have some crops to spray. I have some more crops to plant. <laughs> Things are not going to let up until Labor Day. And that's the easy part. Getting everything sold can often be the most difficult part. Having enough labor to get everything sold at the farmer's markets, uh, that can be a challenge sometimes. But things have been going pretty good so far. Uh, the beautiful weather helps. Uh, sales have been strong. Hopefully they will continue to be strong so we can get all this beautiful produce harvested and sold at markets. And I'm always looking forward to late September and October when things start winding down and I get a little bit of a break. But until then, it's go, go, go. There goes our mobile market trailer off to Marysville. Still a lot of small ones out here, but there's definitely some nice ones too. Those are 
beautiful. I don't even think we have to wash these peppers today. There's not a speck of dirt on them. So we're just gonna stack seven tubs on a pallet and roll them in the cooler. We had a halfway decent pick of zucchini and cucumbers today. They're kind of coming back to life. We got nine tubs of zucchini there and 10 tubs of cucumbers ready for the cooler. This is the last thing I was expecting to do today. I'm out here in the sweet corn spraying avian control bird soap. It's supposed to deter birds because they don't like the taste of the soap on the silks. Let me show you the damage they're causing. Here's one right here. See that right there? They peck in through the husk and get like two or three kernels and ruin the ear and then move on to the next one. Fortunately, I think I've caught it in time that they haven't devastated the whole patch. That's what a rac that's probably a raccoon there that opened that one up. There's another one. So it makes it hard to pick because you think you're picking a perfectly good ear until you look at the other side. Look at that, just shredded from the beaks of birds. Completely ruined it. Man, this corn is beautiful. You can see they're uh, landing on the corn stalks and pooping on the flag ears. That one is not bad. It looks like they may have started pecking on it, but they didn't get through yet. Oh, look at that beautiful corn. That is perfect. It's a beautiful ear of corn. Ready to pick tomorrow. There's a few spots right there at the top that didn't fill out perfectly. But for the most part, that is a perfect ear of corn. And you know me, I have to taste test them in the field to make sure it meets my approval. That is outstanding. These darn red winged blackbirds and starlings have darn near ruined this patch. Another one. Yeah, I can look down through here and see. They're getting a lot of it. Shoot. Look at that, just one, one or two kernels, and then they move on. That one is tore up. There's definitely some hot spots out here that they have totally devastated, but there's also a lot of good corn still. There's probably just an acre here. Uh, you know, an acre should give me almost a thousand dozen. I bet you I'll be lucky to get three or four hundred out of here. Now that the coon have been in here and the birds have been in here. I didn't put my helium scare balloons out and I should have. I'm kicking myself for not doing that last week. I might do that yet today, at least over in the next patch that continues on across that field. Uh, I just went through here yesterday I did not get off and walk through the patch much. I was mainly just driving up and down the roads on my Ranger and I did not see any bird damage. So I thought we were good. It's amazing how fast these starlings and red winged blackbirds come in here and can devastate an acre in one day. I don't know if they're doing it overnight or during the day. I don't think they're nocturnal. So they're probably doing it during the day daylight hours and I just don't see them out here. But once I start driving out here, I see flocks of them coming up out of the corn and you know they get scared off and eventually they'll come back. Hopefully this uh, avian bird soap will deter them.
This is the avian control bird repellent. And it's just some sort of soap. I can see the active ingredient there. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. But I'm out. Gotta order some more. All right, I'm over here at the other farm where I keep my corn planter, some of my other vegetable equipment in my kayaks and my transplanter and my uh, nitrogen applicator for side dressing 28% nitrogen on my sweet corn. I just discovered a couple acres that I missed last week when I was out inspecting the corn to see how the weeds were being controlled. So I'm gonna go get that done real quick. And then when I get back, I think I have time before supper yet to spray some corn weeds on about five acres. And then I have about one acre of green beans that has some weeds getting out of control as well. So we're gonna try to get all that knocked out today and that'll make my tomorrow and Wednesday just a little bit easier. Just got back here to my place. Got the sprayer loaded for tonight to do some foliar feeding on the vegetables. And when I got here, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna drive out in the sweet corn patch and see if these darn birds are still here. Sure enough, they were out there. So I'm gonna put the balloons up. I don't have helium. And then I started thinking about it. I don't think I need helium. So I'm just gonna blow these balls up with air. They're about the size of a beach ball and hang them from an eight foot T-post. It'll be above the corn. We'll see if that works. I'll show you what these blooms look like. I got three different styles here. A black. Ooh, that looks scary. Yellow and a white. I'm gonna go get these filled up. I'll take you out in the field and let's get them hung up and we'll see what happens. There's my three balloons. On one end is a little fill tab. On the other end is a little eyelet, like a loop. And they give you some string and some stickers and some streamers. So I'm thinking I'm gonna tie this to the top of the post. I wish it was up higher. I'd prefer it to be, you know, 10 foot above the corn. I'm not sure how to do that though. I need to do this quick because these birds are tearing this corn up. I'm going to tie it to the top of the post and I'm going to use the stickers and streamers to stick around the balloon. It's worth a try. You know, if it had helium in it, I could put a great big long string on it. I don't know if the helium would be strong enough to lift these things up or not. They're pretty heavy. I have no idea if this is the right way to do this. I don't know what these are for. <laughs> I'm just experimenting. You can't hurt, right? I'm sure I'm gonna hear about it down in the comments about how I messed it all up and didn't do it right, but I'm learning as I go. All right, let's go put these two up somewhere else. All right, there's blue number two. One more to put up. I mean, I have like seven. Maybe I'll put them all up. I just want to get three of them up before dinner. You know, right now, there are no birds in this field. Maybe it's just because I'm out here with the truck. Maybe it's the balloons, who knows? I can hear the birds. You know, they have a, those red-winged blackbirds have a distinct sound. I can hear them chirping over in the other field. They can stay over there. I'm done with that patch. We're moving into this new one tomorrow and the next day. I sure hope it's got enough corn to pick in it. I'm gonna be so upset. I can't believe we're starting our season off and we might be hurting for corn because of these darn birds. All 
Alrighty folks, I just finished up hanging six of these scare balloons around this one acre corn patch. It only took me like 20 or 30 minutes to do this. So if it works, this is a very cheap, easy method for controlling birds. I don't see any out here right now, but it's probably a coincidence because I've been out here driving around and pounding in fence posts. I don't know if I did this right. Yes, I would love to have helium in them to see if they would float or have them up on higher sticks or posts up above the corn, maybe 10 or 15 feet. But I will let you guys know how this works out in the next video, because in the next video, we'll probably be picking sweet corn over in this new patch later in the week. And I will be moving those balloons over there and talking about how things went with these scare balloons. Alrighty, it is dinner time. I'm getting hungry. So I think this is where we're going to wrap up tonight's video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you all again real soon down the farm.